الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد قال الله تعالى في قرآنه المجيد بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم وصدق النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين As we all know my topic for today is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but first I want to talk about fear what what is fear fear is a interesting emotion it can rather motivate you to do something or paralyze you as we all know if we give an example of a lion that comes right now most of us would just paralyze we would out of fear we won't know what to do because we all know what a lion does it could eat you up even if you try running away from me that is one type of fear that paralyzes you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran balances out he does talk about his punishment but not always about punishment also Allah talks about that he is Ghafoor and he is Rahim because, because if a man if a man becomes hopeless in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he will go astray he will always think you know I'm already sinning I'm already doing too many sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not gonna forgive me because he has no hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he will do more sins there's no hope left for me I can't return to anyone so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has balanced it out has balanced both fear and hope for human for the insan so when he commits something wrong because of his because of the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at the same time he has hope that he can go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for forgiveness you know in the hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a person does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what happens to him is he becomes more fearful of the people that the person will say this to him that that person will say this to him that I did something wrong maybe that person saw he forgets the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when when he does so many sins and he does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself just takes out the fear from that person. That you know, I won't give him that <clears throat> taqwa that he'll realize that I am actually watching him before the people. I know more than the people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <clears throat> told his sahaba, on the day of judgment there will be a person who will come with so many hasanat, so many hasanat, mountain full of hasanat, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would wipe it away like it's dust so the sahabas they feared they became scared they, they said Ya Nabi Allah is he from among us? is he from among us? he said yes he will be from one of you he will be amongst you the, <clears throat> and why? Ya Rasulullah tell us why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says what he will do is in front of people he will do he will look very pious he would do actions you know in front of people praying salah properly you know keeping his fast doing zikr in front of people but when he's alone at night he does all haram he does all the sins because he's not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is watching so that my dear respected brothers we don't want that we want before we fear the people we have to learn how to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us hope too Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he also says in the Quran that he is ghafoor rahim and this brings me to a, a, a story of this young sahabi from Ansar that one day he was passing by a house and 
Back then, they didn't have proper doors. They only had curtains. So when he was passing by a house, he looked, accidentally, he looked inside someone's house. And the curtain moved, and he saw a female taking a whistle. And he stared maybe one second or two seconds. And then later he realized what he did was wrong. He became so scared. He became so scared that he did not want to show himself to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, probably by now, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala already revealed ayat on me that I did, I did this sin. He ran away from the city. And days passed by, nobody had seen him. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, have you seen this, this young Sahabi? They said, Ya Nabi Allah, we have not seen him for days. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, go search for him. Go search for him some. They go out, they go in the city, Medina, not find him. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, go outside. So they reach to a village where there's Bedouins. And some of the Sahabas, they went and they asked these Bedouins, Do you, have you seen someone, young person? They described the Sahabi. They said, yes, this, this young kid, he weeps. He weeps all day. But at the night, at the end of the day, he comes down from the mountain. He weeps all day at the mountain, comes down at night, and he asks for milk. And after he's done, he goes back. So the Sahaba, you know, they stayed there until he came. And they took him to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even then, he, was, he did not want to show his face to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he became so sick that he was on his deathbed. And the Sahabas, they told Ya Nabi of Allah, he is very sick to his deathbed, that he's about to die very soon. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to this, this young Sahabi. And he says, what do you think? He said, I fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not forgiven. I have done such a great sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive me. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah is bigger than that. Allah's word is bigger than that. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came down and he said, uh, first he said salam and then he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told this, hum, uh, this sahabi that if he meets me, uh, Allah, if he meets me with the world full of sins, I will meet him with my forgiveness. I will meet him with my forgiveness. This is how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is how much hope we, have, we should have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only fear that will paralyze us, but hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. And this news, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispered in the sahabi, the young sahabi in his ear, and he shouted and he passed away. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the sahaba, gather for his janazah. They, they did his burial. And after, after the janazah was done, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is tiptoeing. He's tiptoeing slowly. Umar radiallahu an, he asked, Ya Nabi Allah, what are you doing? He said, Oh Umar, woe to you. I'm tiptoeing here because the malaika is here and I cannot find space, space to step on the earth because the malaika are here. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Not only that we fear him, but he has put in hope that I can forgive. I am Ghafoor, I am Rahim. And I'm going to end with this hadith, beautiful hadith that in Bukhari, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet says, Allah ta'ala, I am to my abd what he thinks of me. So if we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, not forgiving, then, then we will always think that. But if we have yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us, will, will have mercy upon us on the day of judgment. And this quote, uh, I can't remember properly, but 
one, one, one scholar was saying that how do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you? How do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you? He says, the sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you is that He has given you tawfiq to ask Him for forgiveness. If He did not give you tawfiq, then He has not forgiven you. So this is the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, put, put on us. And He says it many times in the Qur'an that His mercy is, is great. And actually one more story came that at the time of Bani Israel, back then when a person used to commit a sin, the sin used to show in a, in a form, an ugly form in front of the house of the person. And people would pass by the person's house and they would see and they would know that this, this such such person did this sin. And one time he did this great sin and he became, he became bothered that he did such a great sin, people are seeing it in front of his house. And out of that he becomes very upset. He becomes very, he becomes very upset and he's walking in the open desert, open land and he says, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, is my sin is my this great sin I did? Is it bigger? Can you not? Is it bigger than your arsh? Can you not forgive me? He said, and they say that Musa alayhi salam came and he told him that Allah subhanahu wa taala says that my arsh is bigger than your is way bigger than this small the small sin you have committed. So what we learn from this is never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's what the ayat I read. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Don't ever lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us tawfiq to act upon whatever has, whatever has been said. And may Allah forgive all our sins. And may Allah bring us close to Him. أَقُولُ كَوْلِ هَذَا اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُو